So a while back we've discussed one of the recent studies from Avi Loeb, the somewhat controversial Harvard scientist, somewhat well known for very often proposing a lot of explanations involving extraterrestrial intelligence. Now he actually became famous because of Oumuamua, which he essentially proposed was some kind of an extraterrestrial craft or potentially some kind of a solar sail from another star system, but as you might have learned in one of the previous videos, it's extremely unlikely to be the case. But more recently, Loeb, along with his undergraduate student Amir Siraj, also proposed that there was a very intriguing meteorite that potentially landed somewhere on planet Earth, which they then decided to try to retrieve. Although I guess technically this was a meteor, because it very likely exploded in the upper atmosphere, leaving only tiny pieces behind, which then landed somewhere on the planet. And that somewhere is of course where the controversy starts. It most likely landed somewhere in the Pacific. And the reason I'm saying controversy is because, as we've discussed in that previous video, Lube and his team were pretty convinced that they discovered where it landed and were then able to organize an expedition in order to retrieve some of the fragments from the bottom of the ocean, with some of the samples containing unusual sphere rules. And according to his team and according to the research, some of these sphere rules were very unusual in their composition and in that paper Abby Loop specifically states that he believes some of them potentially came from some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence once again. Now you can actually learn more about this particular discovery and what I thought about it in one of the videos in the description, but today we're going to talk about some of the updates that once again basically tell us that yeah, it's probably completely incorrect and for maybe one very important reason. They might have been looking in the completely wrong spot and they might have completely misinterpreted some of the seismic data that they used to try to pinpoint the location. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton and once again we're going to discuss the non-discovery of extraterrestrial intelligence, but I guess more specifically, we're going to talk about the recent study and some of the emails I received in the last few months that basically clarify that these sphere rules, first of all, are most likely a type of a human pollution, and second of all, the location where these sphere rules were discovered have nothing to do with this particular meteor. And the study we're discussing today, as always, you can find in the description below. But the title from the John Hopkins University kind of spoils everything, but is actually really funny. Interstellar signal linked to aliens was actually just a truck. And so anyway, before we discuss these unusual sphere rules and why they're not alien technology, let's discuss a much more important part of Avi Loeb's original paper. The paper that was entirely based on seismic data in order to locate the meteor. Now the thing is, a lot of meteors enter the planet all the time. Some of them occasionally get captured by CCTV and very often make the local news, but in reality this is something that happens every day somewhere on the planet. And as a lot of these meteors enter the atmosphere, they very often explode in the upper atmosphere, but prior to the explosion, or sometimes even after it, they end up producing a tremendous amount of vibrations in the atmosphere, basically producing infrasound waves of relatively high amplitude. Or in other words, they produce a lot of loud booms. And these booms can technically be detected by a lot of different detectors on the planet, including seismic detectors. And here's a really good example of the famous Chelabix meteor from 2013. Here you can actually see several different stations detecting the booms, which then kind of allows us to pinpoint exactly where this meteor landed. That's basically how it was discovered back in 2013. But most of the meteors usually fall somewhere in the water, in the ocean. And so the samples from them are practically impossible to retrieve. But in this case, this particular meteor was potentially a little bit special. It was maybe moving a little bit too fast to have come from the solar system. Now that's actually also debatable because several studies confirm that it might have actually come from the Oort cloud and was not extra solar or came from another star system, but nevertheless it was moving just a little bit too fast. And because of this, or because of its potential extra solar nature, that's why this expedition was organized. And once again several sensors picked up the vibrations in the Earth's atmosphere. Here are some of the sensors that were able to hear it, but for Avi Loeb's study only one was used. The one on the Manus Island, very close to Papua New Guinea. But the researchers who reanalyzed the data from all of these stations discovered something really strange about the data from the Manus station. It was surprisingly precise, with much much higher precision than anything else ever seen before. And much higher precision than any of the other stations. But nevertheless, they've used this one point to try to track down where the meteor landed, with the location visible roughly in this area. 
but this was way too accurate and actually a really small landing area for just a single station. And so the researchers behind the recent study took a look at all of the sensors and discovered that something here was just not adding up. The data from other sensors was just a little bit different. And so they realized that maybe it was actually tracking something entirely different. And so they went to Google Maps to try to figure out exactly what it was. And a much more thorough analysis revealed that it potentially was something on the road next to the station. Because in this case, the signal changed directions over time as if something was driving on the road. And it seems to have matched directly what this seismometer picked up. With the researchers from this paper concluding that it was potentially some kind of a relatively heavy truck just making usual truck sounds. Moreover, that signal did not actually contain anything we usually expect from a meteor, suggesting that this location was completely wrong. But by using other stations, they then were able to work out a new location, and it's basically what you see right here. This is about 106 miles away from where Avi Loeb was conducting his expedition, and so the samples he discovered are extremely unlikely to have come from anything related to this meteor. And so then the next question is, what did they actually find? What are these strange spherules? Well, I've discussed one potential explanation in that previous video in the description. And actually more recently, I even received the email from the scientist behind the study providing me with more data. His name is Patricio Gallardo, and you can find his study somewhere in the description as well. And while he basically clarified that this is extremely likely human pollution, most likely the result of local mining. And in his email, he talks about a 1976 paper from Larry Doyle that talks about black magnetic spherule fallout in the Gulf of Mexico. In essence here, the researchers were trying to find biological matter, but instead they discovered a bunch of spherules that kind of contaminated their experiment. And the overall conclusion from the discussion here was that a lot of these unusual spherules, that usually seem to be very similar to meteorite dust, are actually a type of coal ash or a type of a mining pollution. Or sometimes a byproduct of burning coal in a power plant, which then ends up mixing with a lot of stuff in the upper atmosphere and can actually travel for hundreds of kilometers before raining down to Earth and then ended up somewhere in the oceans. And so I guess in some sense, Avi Loeb was kind of correct. This is a sign of technology, just maybe not extraterrestrial technology. Very terrestrial and in this sense, very human. A sign of some kind of a coal emission or potentially leftovers from human mining activity. And so by itself, this particular study that I will produced actually ended up teaching me and a lot of other people around me so much. So thanks, Avi. Avi Loeb and his team literally found signs of emissions from some kind of a coal plant somewhere out there at a depth of several kilometers in the middle of Pacific Ocean, which to me at least is really mind-blowing. And eventually all of this will probably become sediment, all of this turn into little particles that are going to be visible in the middle of other sediment, and will most likely raise a lot of questions for future intelligent species, if they do exist, asking questions about who exactly left all of these signs and what exactly were they doing. And so, conclusions. Looks like there was a very loud truck driving somewhere on the road very close to a seismometer on a Manas Island near Papua New Guinea, which misled researchers to look for a meteor in a completely wrong location. And what they found there was basically signs of human activity over the last few decades, which technically deserve their own studies and their own examinations. And so technically, even though a lot of scientists kind of left this paper off, I find it absolutely fascinating. It ended up providing so much extra science and so many additional studies and honestly taught me a lot about our own planet and the human impact that's even visible at the depth of the ocean. And I'm actually sure that there are going to be additional studies trying to refute all of this, so I'm super excited to follow this up, and I think we're all going to learn so much more in the next few months. And so until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.